Welcome to the Enquendor Guitars Workshop for another episode in the video series where I show you very in depth what goes into making one of my electric guitars. And this is going to be a fun episode, not a lot of explaining to do, not a lot of measurement to take. In this episode I'm going to carve the body, so let's get started. When carving a body, yeah, almost anything goes. It's all up to your imagination. Um, there's a couple of things you have to keep in mind, in my opinion. And in my case, it's the pickup rings. I'm going to use pickup rings for my pickups. So, yeah, the thing I have to keep in mind is that I stay clear of where my pickup rings are going to be with the carve. So, for example, this carve here I have to keep in mind uh, to not carve away underneath this corner so that's what I'm going to mark out so one of the few measurements I have to do is where is my pickup ring and of course I can measure the pickup ring it's 89 millimeters so I give it a, a bit extra so 89 says say 92 uh, 46 is the half, so 46 and 92, and I'm going to do it again here, 46 and 92. While carving, don't cross this line. And of course, this line right here. So as long as I keep these lines in mind, I should be fine. Let's elongate this a bit. So don't get in this area when carving and that should be fine. Besides the pickup rings, um, I have another consideration to make. I've got a limitation uh, on how I can carve my body shape. And it has all to do with the inlay top and the fact I want to have my false wooden binding consistent uh, all the way around. Uh, due to the inlay top I've got a restriction on how much I can carve or how deep I can carve on the sides. And I've got a nice little diagram uh, drawn out in my black book of knowledge uh, that tells me yeah, how far I can, uh, how deep I can carve on the sides uh, for any given uh, facet on my body so yeah let me show you the diagram so I hope this shows up okay and otherwise I have to make some try to make some computer graphics <laughs> um, but yeah basically I've got two uh, cross sections drawn of my guitar body and this section over here I hope this is the most clear diagram is my inlay top and it's nine millimeters thick. My eight millimeter false binding. And you can see all these diagonal lines corresponding with a certain uh, chamfer width on top of the body. So for example, if I have a, want to have my chamfer on my body to be 30 millimeters wide, I can follow this line and I can read over here that I can uh, should not carve any deeper on the sides than 10 millimeters. Uh, if, for example, if I take a 50 millimeter chamfer or bevel on the sides of my guitar, I can follow this line over here and it ends up around 9 millimeters deep. So the shallower uh, or the wider I want to make the chamfer on top of my guitar, that's the shallower my cut can be. So I'm going to mark nine millimeters of depth on the side of my body to give me a guideline to 
how deep I can do my carve. And now using the diagram, uh, I know I have to mark out nine millimeters of depth all the way around my guitar body. And I've got a nice tool. I think it's called a mort mortising gauge or something. I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to set this to nine millimeters. And I can run it along the entire circumference of the body. So I don't know if it shows up on camera because it's having some focusing issues. Um, but there's now a very faint line visible up until which point, up until where I can do my carve. And that's the downside um, of this inlaid top. It looks great from the front, but if you want to have the false binding, um, yeah, uh, the same all the way around. Um, yeah, I can't do any extreme carves uh, on the side of my bodies. Yeah, let me finish this line and I'll come back to you when I'm going to draw the carve to the front of the guitar. The difficult part will be avoiding uh, this corner where the um, picker bring is going to be. So I'm going to stay clear from there. And yeah, at this point you can just draw in any shape you like, yeah, essentially. I can do something like this and I like to follow the lines as much as possible. Something like this. Same goes for here. Maybe I'll do it, change it up a bit. I always like to change up my carves just a little. So maybe something like this. And I usually like a 30 millimeter chamfer all around. So I'm going to put in a couple of marks on 30 millimeters and I'm using my finger uh, on my uh, ruler as a sort of a stop. I can't use 30 here. this also on the other side let's flip it around and make it a bit dirty here yeah and the carve is really a creative step now I like to use Again, my finger as a guide. And I think I'm going to move this into this far out edge. And let this join up here. Looks great. And same for the other side. Let's start at 30. Now my main lines are in. I'm going to darken them a bit. And I think I'm going to blend in this line at this point with this line. and in the corner as well. These lines are mostly here. 
to help me. This will be my main carf, I think. And maybe when I'm done, I'm going to maybe increase uh, this bit over here. Just push it in just a little bit. This is my starting point. I'm going to first do the rough shaping uh, and then I can always fine tune it. So yeah, let me get some rasps, files, scrapers, um, sanders, whatever, whatever it takes to get this shape. And I usually start with just a couple of rasps. So now I can bevel the sides over between this line and this line. And I'm going to try and keep it as nice and straight as possible to get a real flat and very sharp bevel on this guitar. So obviously the first thing you need to do is make sure your body is clamped down to a workbench or in my case my neck carving jig because this allows me to have access on all sides and I can move around the body to carve the shape and yeah I'm going to use a round uh, rasp first and just start carving into this beautiful body. Uh, first time you're doing this it will be scared um, but yeah you get used to it and I've marked my carve and off camera I did a mark here for the depth uh, I want to carve here and this is going to be a little deeper so this is where the false binding is going to um, deviate or to change a bit but yeah I need a nice deep axis here to really get up to the 23rd and 24th fret on the neck so yeah let's start carving <laughs> Again, you can use uh, angle grinders, power carvers, uh, maybe even your oscillating spindle sander or whatever uh, to do this carving, spoke shaves, all valid options. Uh, I like to do things by hand, not a lot of noise. Uh, yeah, I can put on some music and have fun for a couple of hours. So yeah, here we go. Two sides are now almost done. And again, like with uh, carving the neck, I use a different variety of uh, rasps. This is a very fine, small rasp. Of course, my Shinto uh, rasp. And a set of these Narex, of Narex uh, rasps. Very good quality, very affordable rasps. Yeah, in my opinion, I have these for years and they still work great. Yeah, and I like these very small, fine rasps for the final touches. And although they're very fine and very small, they remove a remarkable amount of material. They're very precise. I really like these small ones. And I'm almost up to the line, both at the sides and at the top. And almost no visible seam 
between the false binding and the top. I'm very, very pleased. It's always, yeah, a bit, um, what you call it, exciting or, yeah. I'm always wondering if the joint uh, is perfect and you can only see it when you're carving. And up until this point, I'm very, very pleased uh, with the result of the seam between the body wood, the binding and the top. at the top of the guitar is done after using uh, cabinet scrapers and some sandpaper. I've now fairly straight and clean edges and the top of the guitar is ready for final sanding. Uh, but first I'm going to carve of course the belly carve on the back of the guitar uh, and I start uh, carving the neck joint somewhat that, that makes it easier uh, to finish when the neck is glued in. So I start by doing that, so yeah, let's first draw out our two carves at the back of the guitar. I start by drawing in the belly carve and I like to follow uh, the outline of the guitar somewhat. And that's the downside of Black Limba. Pencil, pencil hardly shows up, so let's get another pencil. What I like to do, I like to just drawing a shape, something like this. I hope it shows up on camera, it's very hard to see. Just gets out a line I like, maybe widen it a little here. And uh, I've already clamped it in. <laughs> And on the sides I'm going to draw in somewhat of a side profile. Of how I want my belly carve to look, but it's yeah, more of an initial guideline to be honest. Usually I decide the exact shape of the carve while I'm carving more to give me an indication of what I want for my belly carve. Something like this. And then again use a rasp and start carving. What I tend to do is the line I've drawn in on the side, it starts here at the edge uh, and goes deeper, farther along I go, and then comes up again. So I start with a shallow angle and with each pass I'm going to increase the angle of the rasp until I'm at the, yeah, the point where I want my belly carve to be the deepest and then start leveling out the rasp again. Is our belly carve all nice and done very quick job very easy the black limba is so easy to work with it's easy to carve with rasps and files uh, it works great with your cabinet scraper your scraper cards 
and it's very easy to send. Yeah, I really like working with black limba and I'm very pleased with the shape of the belly carve and the nice and thin profile as seen from the yeah, side or from the top actually. Uh, yeah, the final carve to do is uh, to make a start with the neck joint carve so it's easier for me to finalize it uh, once the neck is glued in. So yeah, let me finish it real quick and I'll be right back. Carving on the body is done. I'm very pleased with how it looks at the moment. Um, and before I do anything else, I'm going to give it a quick pass with my random orbit sander. It's much easier to do without the neck attached. And then, yeah, after that, I have to drill uh, the holes for the wiring for the pickups uh, and such. Uh, yeah, and then it's ready to be sanded, but that's probably the next episode. I almost forgot to tell you, uh, yeah, just a little bit of information, I'm going to start it, um, it's already really smooth, so I can start with 180 grit sandpaper and then I'll use a 240, 220, 240 grit and that will be fine for now uh, until I have assembled uh, the neck. Sanding on the body is now done and it looks great to be honest. I'm again very pleased with how this guitar is turning out this far. Um, there's still a couple of things to do. Uh, starting with drilling all the holes necessary for the controls, uh, the input jack and the holes for the wiring for the pickup. So that's what I'm going to do next. I like my controls to be and I have a, a measurement I always use is five and a half so 55 millimeters from the edge it's just a personal preference I have put down a couple of marks someone like that and I like to be able on my guitars to reach the volume knob I always do volume volume uh, volume tone and three-way switch and I like to be able, when I rest my hand on the bridge, to reach the volume knob with my pink. It's going to be there. Check. Something like this. Yeah, should be fine. And I also like a spacing of five and a half centimeters in between so this distance from the edge to the where the knobs are and in between the knobs is the same set my compass to five and a half do exact measurements where I've just made the mark this is where the three-way switch is going going this is for the tone knob and this is for the volume. And I think I should have enough clearance to fit it all in. So here are all the controls we've got to install at a later stage of course. But I always check the diameter of these um, pots for example. There are usually two diameters uh, for the shafts and usually it's or 10 or 8 millimeters and these are 8 usually the EMG ones and these two pots come with the Fisman Fluence pickups usually they are 8 millimeters 
and alpha pots or CMT, is it CMT? Um, usually are 10, but these are eight. I'm going to use a Switchcraft input jack, or output rather, and that's 12 millimeter, it's 11 and a bit, almost 12, so I have to drill a 12 millimeter hole for the shaft. And I like to recess it, and the recess is 16 millimeters. And for the three-way switch, I'm going to need another 12 millimeter hole. So I'm going to write it down on the body, eight, eight, and 12. So it will be something like this. And now I have to measure out where my input or output jack is going to sit. Very easy. I'm going to connect these two, these two points. Find the center. And it's 55. Seven and a half on each side. This should be the center. I've taken the center, drawn a line perpendicular to the edge of the guitar, found the center, and this is where my input jack is going to sit volume tone and three-way switch uh, yeah let's drill all of these holes first so these are fairly easy to drill make sure you have a nice and sharp preferably a new drill bit yeah and just drill a hole all the way through They're nice in the center of the cavity. I don't look there out. Let's switch the bit. Yeah, uh, this one is very close to the edge, but should be all right. So now let's drill the hole for the input jack or output jack. I have to drill it, unfortunately, by hand. Hopefully uh, you can see it. This is where I need to drill my hole. I'm going to mark it with my awl. And I've clamped the body in the vise somewhat and used some padding to do not damage the body. And I've clamped it in in such a way that I can essentially drill almost straight down. I feel that's it. that's the easiest. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use just my cordless drill with a 12 uh, millimeter drill bit on a low setting, so a low RPM. And I can, from this side where I am, I can see the line I've drawn in that should be straight down. And hopefully I can reference uh, the angle of the drill on that line and I'm also looking at where the drill is cutting the wood first so in this case it's cutting here more than on the other side this means I have to tip my drill just a little now that I'm partially in you can check the alignment of the drill it looks fine And with holes like these, just take your time. It's not a competition. It's all about precision. So don't rush it. And don't put any pressure on your drill bit. 
Just let the drill do its work. And now we've got a nice hole. Let's check it with an output. It fits. It seems to be straight. Fits nicely, but it isn't recessed yet. To recess it, I found a stepper drill like this to be the easiest. Uh, I've tried different methods in the past by drilling the, uh, a shallow 16 mm hole first. But usually when using bradle point drill bits, the 60 mm drill has a very large bradle point and it was too large for the 12 mm to center properly. So that's why I always drill the small hole first, well small, the 12 mm hole first and use a stepper drill if it's called uh, like that, I don't know, you tell me <laughs> what this drill is called in English. Um, uh, make sure when doing this you have a stepper drill that has at least a 12 millimeter and a 16 millimeter step. I've got another one. I also have a larger one, but it goes from 8 millimeters to 14 to 16. So it's missing the 12 millimeter uh, step and you can't center it properly. But when you have a drill like this with a 12 millimeter step, it will center itself more or less. You still have to make sure that you keep it centered by just checking where it moves the most of the material. And we go in. to 14 first and now we're at the 16 millimeter step we're going to take it no pressure on the drill at all because it will uh, likely cause tear out on the sides and very slowly drill it in a little bit of tear out but we can send it away let's check it And here is one countersunk uh, input jack or output jack. So don't forget the next hole we're going to drill. And it's uh, the hole between the neck pickup uh, yeah, and the bridge pickup. Uh, yeah, you have to drill it before you install the neck, especially with the glued in neck or set neck. <laughs> if you forget it, you have a very hard time getting your wires. Uh, to your neck pickup. Uh, it happened to me once and I had to drill a hole coming from the uh, console cavity over through the entire body to get into the uh, cavity for the neck pickup. Uh, so yeah. If you have routed everything, yeah, make sure before you glue in your neck you drill this hole. I'm going to drill a small pilot hole first. with a four millimeter long drill bit. I like to draw it somewhere near the corner. And I'm going to drill it straight on the edge uh, in between uh, where the pickup cavity is and uh, where the neck is going to sit. I'm going to try and drill it as straight as I can. Don't know if it shows up on camera. Let me see. Uh, if you can see my drill on the other end. Let's do it like this. So you can see uh, where my drill ended up. Exactly where I wanted it, at the bottom of the bridge uh, pickup cavity. Let's remove this drill. And now I'm going to take an 8 mm long drill bit and widen this hole so I can fit uh, my wires through and especially when using active pickups, uh, especially the EMG pickups, uh, you need to fit the connectors through it. 
So I always make sure that whenever um, I drill this hole, it's wide enough for any modification. If uh, a client wants to upgrade to EMG pickups, for example, that the hole is wide enough to fit the connectors. Again, make sure you have fairly new and good drill bits when you do this. And as you can see, we're all the way through. And I like it when the channel is somewhat in the bottom of the uh, pickup cavity, so I know I can fit my wires in and I don't have any interference with my wires and the pickup. Yeah, so that's one. And the other hole we need to drill is between, of course, the bridge pickup and the control cavity. Uh, I like to drill it in this farmost corner of the, of the pickup cavity. I keep the angle as shallow as I can. So usually I take this corner and drill a hole to the control cavity to protect the body. And I have these, um, yeah, what are it? Pretty knives, very thin metal. I'm going to stick it to the body as well, just to prevent any damage from the drill in, in this corner especially when I'm going to use the bigger one. I really don't want to damage the body at this point. It should be fairly protected. Yeah, the drill is resting on the metal plate. There. And as you can see, I'm using uh, the lower setting on my drill, so it gives me uh, yeah, more control. Yeah. And I don't know if you can see it. This is going to be a terrible video. Uh, the hole is right here. And I don't know if it shows up again, but this is the damage done to the drill bit to this stainless steel plate otherwise if the plate wasn't there this damage would have been done to the corner of our route yeah success and here is our holes our holes and here is our hole for the wiring So unfortunately this is it for this week's episode. Uh, the carving is done and uh, there's still a little to do well the, when the neck is glued in but that's for next week's episode I think. Uh, yeah I've started final sanding the body and we've drilled all the holes necessary for the controls and the wiring. So yeah I hope you liked this episode and if you did please leave a like and while you're down there please consider subscribing to my channel if you already haven't so you get updated and notified when I upload some new tips, tricks, guitar builds related videos uh, for a luthier in a small brew shop like myself. And I hope to see you all in the next week's video uh, where I make the control uh, cover plates and glue in the neck and finish off the neck, car the neck joint carve on the back of this guitar body. So I hope to see you there but until then have a nice week.